What's up, guys? So on this episode of Sit Down Saturday, we have Mona McSharry. Hi. <laughs> um, uh, let's get into this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're watching Mona's 100 breaststroke semi-final from the European short course in Glasgow, just December past. Um, yeah, Mona's in lane six, the closest person on the screen. In the blue arena, carbon air. There you go. So we'll get into this. Okay. So I'll pause it. I'll pause it before you go. So, Mona, why do you uh, like slap yourself before you get into the water or race? Um, I think it just kind of hypes me up. You know, I get, I feel like my muscles are like getting all tingly and I'm just like ready to race. I don't know. Yeah, it just gets me psyched uh, okay. and excited. And to the start, just to dive here, we can't really say in the video because it will uh, mess up the recording. But we'll yeah. So we got a good strong pull out underwater. Came up the furthest ahead yeah. as well. So it's, uh, is there a reason why you would kick and then pull? Because uh, I know we've had other breaststrokers on who uh, do different stuff. Is this the reason or? Yeah, I think I've, I'm pretty sure I've messed around with both in the past and my pull down used to be so bad. I think um, my basis around it is I split it up enough so that I can get as much distance out of it as possible. So I do my five kick in streamline and then hold that. And then when I feel myself kind of slowing down a bit, then I do my pull down and I hold that. So I think it's just trying to elongate the the phases as much as possible so that I can get out in front. All right, um, so we just got the 50 meters here. We say uh, you have to have a good high stroke rate on the 100 to make sure you get into the race properly. Yeah, definitely, especially with short course. Um, you know, you, you kind of just have to get up and add it, you know, quickly because there's so much, there's so little space between each turn, and then you're turning again, so you don't have time to build into it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, a good fast turn there. It was, I'd say, it's pretty well timed. I'm not much of a breast shooter myself, but I can see that. So. <laughs> We uh, you split well. You're about to split here. Come out thirty point one. Would you say that's a good time to go out on? Um, yeah, I would. Um, it's it's quite fast, but I think for the hundred meters, it's you know it's holdable. Um, if you're going anything longer, you'd obviously want to control it a bit more. But no, I I was really happy with that race. Um, and I went out really well. I think yeah. Was the race plan to go out fast? Or... Yeah, I think for me mentally i've tried to work on controlling a bit more but generally the way i would race and even the way i would train um is go out as fast as possible and then just hang in there that's kind of the way my mentality works so that's always what i do okay all right we did actually record how many strokes you took you took seven then ten then ten then twelve and it's 25 is that like a is that would you say that's like the usual amount of strokes you take on the short course 100 yeah i've been messing around with it a, b a good bit to be honest um at that competition especially i think heat semis and finals were all different um i didn't get the same stroke count for any of them so i'm kind of still learning as i go yeah. um but that seemed to work out quite well i was super happy that i was able to hold the 10 the second time instead of going to 11 i'd say that was probably the plan so it was even better like one less stroke so yeah. great okay. i know um, I, I heard from owen when we last filmed that it's very important for breaststrokers to know the strokes which i didn't know so yeah yeah, uh, yeah i'm always counting yeah um so we had another good turn i'm pretty sure mo the majority of turns in this are good um, and you're obviously your furthest head because you touched there first. And I, I did have a look at the splits from the other people in the semi-final. I you do have the fastest back ends like 50 as well. Um, obviously Mona won the semi-final as well. So people who don't know. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are still a high tempo. Coming to this last wall. There we go. Are you like? Are you, would you say you're like 
you know, like it's hard to get your breath in off the wall and then having to go say near 15 meters off the wall or 10 meters i definitely struggle with that especially like moving through a race um i don't have great breath control hence why i'm a breath sugar so i can breathe all the time pretty much but um yeah i would say it is difficult i've built on it a lot but i kind of have worked my turn i've practiced a lot on my turn that i can get a good bit of air in without coming too high so i guess it's just all about practice but yeah i would definitely like in a 200 breaststroke uh, after 100 meters when you start hitting you know turn five and six onwards it gets a lot harder to reach the same distance underwater you're just kind of trying to get up so what yeah. would you practice in training off the walls or uh, like same as the race or would you go 15 of every wall um i try and go as far as possible sometimes in training especially for breaststroke i try and practice doing double pull outs just so you're going you know even further and trying to hold you know the same um the same pull down twice and trying to make it as good as the first one which you know is really hard but at least then when you've done the two you know you can do the one easily so that's kind of my best training that's what i would do in training to work on that uh -huh. all right i'll finish off here we'll come into the last part of the race were you feeling it on the last length i was but i was kind of just powering through to the wall i was just so excited because i knew it felt like such a strong race that i was just yeah. excited to get finished and see what the time was yeah so that's obviously your personal best time there yeah, yeah. which is obviously the best time to do it is in an international competition your personal best so no complaints um so uh, obviously you said that you were excited when you finished because you came first in the semi-final and uh, would you change anything um, from the race to improve it or honestly I don't think so um if I was going to change anything it probably would be to play around with the stroke count and see if I could hold um you know that same time with maybe you know an 11 12 on the second 50 instead of a 10 12 or even you know bring back the 12 to an 11 and see uh -huh. can I hold the same time with less or more strokes but um yeah. I was quite happy with that race, to be honest. Just annoyed that I couldn't repeat it in the final, but um, no, it was a good. It was a good race. I'm gonna guess you're off now, off training now. Yeah. Um, well, I'm actually kind of entering back into training. I took oh. three weeks off back there at the end of July. So. Did you I do any like stand-up swims? Um. Actually, no, I didn't. <laughs> um. Me and Grace did the, discuss it. We did talk about it and then kind of decided that because I had only gotten back into the pool kind of at the end of June. So I'd only really been in the water for three weeks. It didn't really make sense. I did do some gym testing um, like uh, kind of like power stuff um, and jumps and everything. And they were all the same or better than they were when I tested back in March. So okay. in regards to that, I'm as powerful and strong as I was, but I didn't really feel like doing any stand up swims because realistically with only three weeks back in the pool, I wasn't expecting anything. So, so uh, you saw the hundred uh, breasts there and obviously there's two other breaststroke events as well. What's your favorite event in breaststroke? Um, uh, probably the 50 or the 100. I, I like the 50 at the moment because it's so fast. I think I've struggled so much with the 100 over the last couple of years and just trying to figure out what works for me that it's kind of like a pain now to race it because I don't know how it's going to go. But yeah. when the 100 goes right, it feels great. But at the moment, I'd say I enjoy the 50s the most. Okay. Um, what's your favorite competition you've been to? Um, yeah. Probably Sadie Collie in 2018. I just love the pool um, and the sun. The atmosphere was great. I don't know. It was just, it was a happy meet. Um, yeah. I've been to so many great pools, but that was definitely my favorite competition. Okay. And uh, are you looking forward to going to a university this year in America? Yeah, definitely. It's been, it's been kind of like a roller coaster since I tried to, probably since June, I've been trying to get a visa and I finally got it. But um, it's been kind of a crazy kind of, will I, won't I be able to get over there? And now that I finally am, you know getting the opportunity i'm just so blessed that yeah. you know during the pandemic i am able to get over there so yeah super excited to get over there and start training That's good. Okay. uh so over lockdown uh what kind of training did you do 
Um, mainly gym sessions and a little bit of running, which then turned into cycling and then back to running because I hated cycling. Um, but I did five like circuit slash um, S and C training sessions with my gym coach during the week on, over Zoom. It was kind of like a, a family class, um, but it was it was lots of fun. So that kind of kept me going and fit and everything. So that was great. And then I did one or two outdoor swims, but it was a bit cold. So yeah. excited against that. Well, what's it like being in the fittest family in Ireland? I think it's great. Um, it's good fun, you know. Uh, like I said, during lockdown, I was doing a lot of circuit sessions and that was like a whole family thing. Even my younger sister, who's only 11, was joining in with us and hating it. But um, no, we, we, had, we had a lot of fun doing that and then, you know, proving that we are a pretty strong family. And yeah. no, it's, it's really nice. It's nice to have that title. What would a, before all this happened, all the coronavirus, what was a normal week look like? Uh, um it was a double swim on a monday which was one long course session one short course i used to travel up to marafelt and then that evening i'd do a circuit session uh in the gym and then tuesday was swim and gym wednesday was double swim thursday was swim friday swim and saturday gym and then swim some weeks depending on how i felt so it was heavy enough but like for me anyway and um, that's the most sessions I've ever done. I think um, I've been building it up ever since, but it was great because I wasn't in school. So I had loads of time to recover, just come home and nap. Uh -huh. uh, would you say all the people you've come across, you would do the most or more land training than them? Or would you say it's very similar? I'd say it's about similar. Um, I added in a circuit session this week instead of a swim session. Um, we, yeah, we actually dropped a swim session and went for like high intensity circuits because I wanted to get kind of more of an aerobic fitness level. And I felt like I couldn't get it as well in the water as I would on land. So probably in regards to that, then maybe I did a little bit more gym. And then I just did two gym sessions a week, but they were normally kind of like an hour and a half to two hours long. So they'd be heavy enough. Like we do quite a bit during those sessions. So I'd say I do the same, if not a little bit more aerobic work on land. Okay. Obviously you would come from a, like a small club program at Marlins. Would you have any advice for smaller club program swimmers? I think the best advice is, you know, if it's working for you, stick with it. I know, like, especially when I was younger and met, you know, the likes of Neve Coyne and even Ellen Walsh and all those um, top athletes that I was competing against, you know, as a junior and going to competitions with, and they all had, you know, a lot more hours than me and a lot more. And I thought, okay, I'm never going to make it from where I am because we only had three or four hours with our club it was a very small club but um you know I ended up making it work and Grace helped me add more hours on so you know if you really want it you can get it from where you are there's no need to move if you don't have to and I've loved being able to live by the sea and stay with my family and not have to move and still be able to achieve my goals so I think you know if you work if you want it and work for it you don't necessarily have to leave your program Okay. Okay. Um, so are you looking forward to, obviously Olympics got pushed back a year. Are you looking forward to the, obviously the, another year, Alan, and the trials in April? Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, I'm, I am looking forward to it. I'm kind of annoyed because I know in Olympic year, there's so much, not added pressure, but it's a lot more stressful because every single thing I do, I'm questioning, is this going to help me or hinder me towards my Olympic dream? Um, especially when you're so close, a year is just so close. And then, you know, halfway through it to be told, no, you're going to have to do this for another year is definitely, it, it's annoying because you need such a strong mentality to work through it. But at the same time, I'm just excited that, you know, they weren't canceled. They're only pushed back. So yeah. I'm able to try and go for it again. So yeah, just taking a break now and then going back into it. Okay. okay. Well, we'll get on to the quick fire round now. So first question is cats or dogs? dogs okay sure. uh, favorite food so like cheap food i think most people say pizza okay uh favorite sport not swimming to watch and play uh gymnastics to watch but i couldn't do it so play gymnastics if i could do it but okay no. uh favorite place to like go on holiday um 
Germany. Okay, favorite TV show if you watch any? Brooklyn Nine Nine. Uh, Max Bench. I don't know if you do bench or not, but. Uh, three rep max is, I think, sixty. Uh-huh. Uh, describe yourself in one word. Crazy. Okay. Uh, short course or long course? Short course. Okay, and that is it. So, thank you, Mona, for coming on. And yeah. please subscribe and like the video. We'll leave Mona's uh, social media in the description. And um, yeah, thanks for coming on. And we'll see you, well, in two weeks, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. bye.